All right, so Foundations, again, is a new kind of, kind of core set that Magic will be uh, adding to, I'm assuming, in the near future. This set comes with a bunch of standard uh, Magic cards, cards from Magic's past, car uh, new cards, mostly cards from Magic's past, and it is introducing a new five-year rotation for standard and some small rules tweaks. But generally, this core set, along with the rotating sets, uh, will be standard for five years. We're not sure when the new standard rotation for normal sets will be, but um, there's a lot of really spicy stuff in foundations that is kind of going to change the face of standard for the next five years. So let's open this bad boy up. We usually like to use these pull tabs. Sometimes they don't work. Ooh, that one worked all right. So you open up your bundle. This is kind of like a mini collection jumping off point. We tend to open up the bundles for each new set because it gives us a kickstart of our collection for the cards that are released in these sets. Inside you will get a box. Actually, I forgot to read the box. So inside the box, let me zoom in here. You will get nine foundations play boosters, 40 lands, an oversized spin down life counter, which I absolutely love. You will get a Foundations card box and an Alt Art Phyrexian Arena, which is really cool. Gotta love the Alt Art. Uh, the box is really neat looking. I like this art uh, with tiny bones on it, stealing some stuff and jumping out of this vault. We've got, um, what's his name? Kaito's Raccoon friend, uh, Tanuki friend. And then inside we've got these inserts, which it looks like we got two of them. And for the first time ever, our bundle comes with adverts. I do like these uh, Giada Font of Hope art pieces. I will give one of these to my brother as he's a big angels player. But let's open this bad boy up. So inside the bundle, we will get this set of cardboard cutouts. These are great counters. Um, they're pretty standard. Usually you get some stun counters, some death touch counters. This one looks like just stun counters and just plus one plus one counters. And then you've got some cardboard pop outs that you can use for uh, whatever you wish. We'll put that aside for now. And then inside here, we've got our spin down die. So they've still continued the trend of not giving you the insert box that comes, that used to come with these. Um, not my favorite, but uh, we'll make do. And then here we've got our really cool kind of speckled Spin down life counter, very clear numbers, very nice design. I like that quite a bit. We've got six, nine play boosters. And then here we will have our lands. So this one will open up because it will also have our foil Phyrexian arena. which is nice because now we've got the enchantment border from Magic's past on the Phyrexian Arena card. Looks cool. I like it. And we've got our land. So they tapped on to some really amazing and historical Magic artists for some of these lands. The main one being uh, Rebecca Gay, who is one of my favorites. And you will get two of one of each in foil. And then here we've got the full art lands. Got our planes, 
uh, our second planes. We get two of these as well. We've got islands. There's Kamigawa. There's Liliana coming out of the grave. There's Tiny Bones in the Swamp. Chandra on the mountaintop. That's the... Um, Snorse and Cowboy from... Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Here we've got a forest with character in it? Oh, there's someone on the tree. Can't tell who that is on the tree. Loot, maybe? No. And then we've got Nissa walking through the roots. This is some really cool lands. I really appreciate that. I'm really excited too because these Rebecca Gay lands have been on my list for acquiring play sets so that I can use them for competitive decks. Again, we've got our non-foil versions of the lands and our non-foil versions of the full art lands. And we've got two really easy to read, really um, straightforward cue cards. These are really great. I've um, introduced not too many people, but enough people to magic where having these cards on hand for them to look at has been really, really helpful. So definitely don't throw these away, especially if you get them in a pack. You don't normally get them in packs, but sometimes they will arise. Sometimes they will show up on in packs. I'm going to sleeve up our Phyrexian Arena. And now we just get the joy of opening nine play boosters. There's some really big hits um, in Foundations. Most of it, again, Wizard saves a lot of their good stuff for collector boosters these days. So not too worried about hitting some crazy cards. We might. We probably won't, though. Uh, so this is going to be pack number one. Luminous Rebuke. Oh no, I die. Uh, black. Okay. Warhorn Raider. And I'll read all the cards out for the first couple of packs, and then we'll kind of hurry up a bit. Hungry Ghoul. Giant Growth is back, baby. Erudite Wizard. Dazzling Angel. Hair Apparent. I'm gonna send this to Wheeler. Grappling Kraken. Cool. Claws Out. Balmor Battle Mage. Ravenous Amulet. And our rare is Sky Knight Squire. We get a Foil Spitfire Lagak. And a Nissa land and a dragon token. Nice. All right, pack number two. Goblin surprise, eaten alive, gnarled colony, refute, healer's hawk, wary thespian, soul shackled zombie, fire spitter whelp. Fiendish Panda, Snakeskin Veil, Arcane Epiphany, and our rare is an Archmage of Ruins. This guy's pretty cool. Five mana for a 3-6 giant wizard. Instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, draw a card. Pretty decent. Then we get a Foil Sanguine Siphoner and a full art planes and an art card. I really do like this fiendish panda. Obviously there's um, quite a few solid themes in Foundations. I think it's going to be a really fun set to draft. It arrives on Arena this week, 
So I'm excited to jump into that. We haven't played much arena lately, but I'd like to play some more with foundations now here. Uh, Gnarly Colony, Fleeting Distraction, Healer's Hawk, Sure Strike, Take Your Own Death, Gold Vine, Gold Vein Pick, Prideful Parent, Cephalid Ink Mage, A Braid, Stroke of Midnight, and our rare. Oh, nope. Nissian Horn Beetle, and our rare is a Kiora of the Rising Tide. Draw two cards, then dis two car discard two cards. She has Threshold whenever Kiora attacks. If there are seven or more cards in your graveyard, you may create Scion of the Deep, a legendary 8-8 blue octopus creature. Pretty awesome. And then we get a Foil Cackling Prowler and a Foil Nissa Land. An art card. Pretty cool so far. I love Kioras. Although I don't play much blue late anymore. Pack number four. Light Shell Duo. Cathar Commando. That is an old favorite. Courageous Goblin. Vampire Soul Caller. Ambush Wolf. Think Twice. Treetop Snare Spinner. Sanguine Siphoner. Cephalid Ink Mage. Nissian Horn Beetle. Stroke of Midnight. And our rare is a Rune Scarred Demon. When this creature enters, search your library for a card, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Whoa. That's going to turn the Demon Standard Deck a little bit on its head. A Foil Giant's Growth and a Full Art Island. A food token. All right, pack number five. Lanowar Elves, our boy is back in standard. They love to see it. Uncharted Voyage, Banishing Light, Axe Guard Cavalry, Baked into a Pie, Broken Wings, Ice Wind Elemental, Reassembling Skeleton, Stormkirk Blood Thief, Mild Mannered Librarian, an offer you can't refuse, and our rare is a Sylvan Scavenging. This is obviously a play on old Sylvan tutor cards. At the beginning of your end step, choose one, put a 1 1 counter on target creature you control, or create a 3 3 green raccoon creature token if you control a creature with 4 or greater. That's pretty good. A goblin borders spoil, and we get a foil Thornwood Falls. The gain life lands are back. One second. All right, next pack. Inspiring Paladin. Burst Lightning. Macabre Waltz. Cackling Prowler, Runaway Together, Armasaur Guide, Fanatic Firebrand, Occluded Courtyard, Nightshade Hawk, Vampire Nighthawk, I don't know why I called it Nightshade Hawk, Joust Through, Essence Scatter, and our rare is a borderless alt art Giada Font of Hope. Angels are back, baby. Fucking cool card. We have a foil fishing pole and we get a normal swamp and a zombie token with an insect token on the back. Nice. That Giada is great. Going in the brother pile. All right. We've got a Strix Lookout. Vanguard Seraph. Infestation Sage. Grown from Ashes. Tolarian Terror is back. Evolving Wilds is back. This guy's really cool. This is a new card. 
It's a 5-3 for 5 with reach, and it has landfall. Whenever a land you control enters, create a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior. Very cool. Inspiration from beyond. Vengeful Blood Witch, Sun Blessed Healer, Adventuring Gear, and our rare is a Flame Wake Phoenix. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, you may pay 1 red. If you do, return this card to the graveyard, from your graveyard to the battlefield. Playing on the Phoenix trope, we have a Foil Crypt Feaster. And we get a Rugged Highland gain land. Alright, pack 8. We've got one alt art in 7 packs so far. We don't really uh, expect to open many, if any, of the alt arts because most of them are saved for the um, collector boosters Felidar savior so it's nice when it's a nice treat when you do get one thrill of possibility gutless plunderer dwinnin's elite elemental adept gleaming barrier witness protections back perforating artist uh, billowing shriek mass Frenzied Goblin, Slag Storm is our rare. That's pretty cool. Oh, a double rare, Herald of Eternal Dawn. Mythic, four white, white, white for a six, six. Angel with flash and flying. You can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. Man, we are hitting on the angels today. Fiendish Panda foil and a full art. Chandra land and an art card. Just gonna put that in a sleeve real quick. Same with the Giada. Even I don't think the Giada is worth really anything, but uh, if we're gonna give it to my brother, we might as well keep it in good condition. All right, last pack. Last pack. We start off with a squad rallier, incinerating blast. Dab, Beastkin Ranger, Mocking Sprite, Helpful Hunter, Pilver, Campus Guide, Cat Collector, Dreadwing Scavenger, Brazen Scourge, and our rare is a Scrawling Crawler. This one's pretty cool. Beginning of your upkeep, each player draws a card. Whenever an opponent draws a card, that player loses a life. And another double rare, we get a Kaikar Zephyr Awakener. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, choose one. Exile, so it's a blinking commander. And then we get a Windscarred Crag Heal Land. And a Fairy Fish Token. Not bad, to be honest. Like, there's a lot... One thing that's odd about a set like this is that because nothing is necessarily new, um, it doesn't feel doesn't feel as exciting to open all this stuff. I think we got some pretty great staples. I think there's some really cool cards in this set in general. I do a lot of pre-ordering singles prior to a set coming out, so I'm not like opening this stuff chasing for anything either, which is also good for my sanity. We got some good red cards. Phoenix is really cool. A braid is awesome. I love Vampire Nighthawk. I'm so glad this guy's back. I'm 
so glad Finn the Fang Bearer is going to be standard for five years. That was my OG. That was like the first competitive deck I ever played. And I played it to death. Like up until the last moments of the standard rotation. Played it to death. All right, we got an Archmage, Archmage of Ruins. Of Ruins, not Ruins. Our Herald. We got a couple, we got two double rare packs, which was real nice. None of our duels are, what is this guy? One black red for a 3-2 devil with death touch with raid at the beginning of your end step. If you attack this turn, each opponent loses three life. That player, unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent of their choice or discards a card. Dang. Do I put red in my Finn the Fang Bearer deck? Because that is giving, um, There was a black snake creature back in the day that whenever you attacked with a death touch creature, your opponent would lose a life and you would gain a life. I can't remember what it's called now. Okay, other than Phyrexian Arena, which was our box rare, our box topper, we got 8, 9, 10, 11 rares or mythics in just 9 packs, which is pretty good. It's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Just gotta snap a quick photo. Love that. Okay, put the angels aside. I wonder. So Kiora wants Threshold, so you self-mill. And then you have to attack with Kiora. Her ETB triggers lets you put two things in the garbage, which is nice. That's it for like you get some of these are land, but you get a nice kickstart to your collection by buying the bundles. I think given the price, it's fairly worth it. You basically get nine packs of cards, which are normally $6.99 here in Canada. You get nine packs uh, for 50 bucks. You get spin down life counter, you get a box, uh, you get a bunch of lands. Honestly, like at this point, most magic players don't need lands, granted, but um, also shout out to this adorable Daiso card holder that I got a while back. Other than not needing the lands, like it's fairly one to one. You're basically just buying nine packs of cards uh, with a little bit extra. And I think that it's generally worth it. It's fun to open. Um, I, I really like them, still stand by them. 
I think that they're great additions to the product lineup and I'm always happy when they uh, release new ones. So that is the bundle for foundations. I hope that was fun. I'm still like a little on the fence. I like opening um, play boosters more than I like opening draft boosters. But I think the entire system has become so contrived and diluted that Wizards has kind of lost their way with what matters to players, with what matters to collectors, with, with what's fun to open. 